This past week I keep hearing the same question. If a woman wants a get, as soon as she comes to the rabbi for the get, the rabbi should immediately, the, should, the rule should be, she gets it immediately. And people ask me even a funnier question, that at the ketubah, while he signs the ketubah, there should be a second document of a get, as soon as the get they want. Hello. Besides the halakhic, whether it works halakhically or not, let's put all that aside. You see that the rabbis did everything that it should be complex to get divorced. On one hand, the rabbis did not want that it should be easy to get divorced. Why? The rabbis were very smart. They knew if you make divorce too easy, people will get divorced. And then they regret it. How many times any pulpit rabbi will tell you how many phone calls did they get? Rabbi, either from the husband or from the wife. I want to get right now. And then the next day they're back together like everything's normal. If every rabbi was to jump and give the get immediately, we would have a lot of divorced couples and a lot of the couples regretting it terribly. Even the, the government, in, in the, the non-Jewish government, non-Jewish law, if you go to a judge, state of New York, state of New Jersey, you try to sign off on a divorce, you have to wait till the judge signs off on it. He has to see if there's valid reasons for, for, for divorce. Can't just, okay, let's get divorced tomorrow, it's all over. Everybody understands that you don't want to make divorce too easy because every time there's a little argument, everything will fall apart. But at the same time, you don't want men to take advantage. You don't want the women to just run away and, 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 and let's, let's make a perfect balance. And that's what the Torah kept fine-tuning and fine-tuning back and forth. Everything, of course, within the framework of al -Akha. Let me explain why I'm saying framework of al -Akha. Because a lot of people in the past week are saying, oh well, these laws are too ancient. We gotta come up, it's 2021, let's get with the times. Our Torah is Nitzhi, is eternal. But just like in all the other halachot, the rabbis found ways within the framework of halakha to perfect and to fine tune. This every situation as the situation came up. It's the same thing with Ketubah, and it's the same thing with the divorce. But before I just get to the divorce, I just want to end up one more thing with the Ketubah to show you how this happened. With the Ketubah, even in our community, in our time, you look at the Ketubah that Khamir Akov Kassin wrote, he puts 5,555, and then he changed to 18,000, whatever that was, because about the Hamza, let's not get into that now. But then later on, the rabbis made it to $18,000, and then they added $26,000. Yes, we get with the times. $5,000 was good in the 1930s, 1940s. But in 2020, we're not going to write $5,000 in the Kitubah. We're going to put much more than that. But it's all within the framework of al so we have to keep fine-tuning these things. Now let's get to the divorce. We all know, I'm sure by now you've heard a lot about this, the Torah on one hand tells us a divorce has to be given, and the divorce has to be given with the husband's free will, meaning to say he cannot be forced into it. We know that out from the Pasuk, the Pasuk says, We know from that, those words, he has to give it to her willingly. There's different Limudim how we know it has to be willingly. But at the same time, even though the Torah says he has to give it willingly, there's a very interesting Gemara, and the Rambam talks about it in length, and the Rambam explains to us that in certain situations, that if a person has to give a divorce, why would a person have to give a divorce? Because he's abusing his wife, he's not doing what he's supposed to be doing for the marriage, etc., etc. Then back in the day when we had a Bedin, when the rabbis had power, which was till pretty recently, in fact, 150 years ago in Turkey, Rabbi Palaji had a lot of power from the government. If you read his books, he writes, if a person violated this edict, there would be this kind of penalty, this kind of edict, this kind of penalty. Yes, the rabbis had power back in the day. And in the fact, even in 2021, in the state of Israel, the rabbis have a lot more power than in America. In the state of Israel, the chief rabbi, Yitzhak Yosef, if he finds a person that he has to uh, give a get, he has the, he tells the, 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 the police standing outside the Bedin and they handcuff him and take him to a prison cell if he so decides because the person should be giving a get. If he feels after his investigation the man is violating his obligations to his wife, he will enforce it. Kofinoto, you've you heard about that. The idea of forcing somebody. In the Gemara's time, they'll beat the guy until the guy would say he wants it. Now the Rambam says, I thought free, what happened to free wills? So the Gemara says, so the Rambam, the famous, very famous Rambam, the Rambam says, 
that every Jew really wants to do at the bottom of his heart, wants to do the right thing. His Yetzirah is trying to stop him. So when you hit him, you're getting rid of the Yetzirah and his good will comes out and he does, he does what's right. But the bottom line is, in general, we don't like to do Kofinoto. But getting back to this article, where the article says, a man won't give his wife a get, there's no solution. First of all, there used to be a solution, till very recently. And even in Israel, there is a solution. There is a kind of force which they would use. Okay, but let's, we're living in America and we don't have those options. We don't have the options of hitting, we don't have the options of all those, all, all those other options. And besides, as we said before, the option of forcing somebody is only when the Bedin decided that this man must give a get. But let's say in a situation where they just got into a fight, tit for tat, we don't know who's right and who's wrong, so you can't force the guy there are certain ways of forcing if, uh, if you don't let him come to shul, because that's indirect. I'm not forcing him to give the get. I'm just telling him, if you want to come to my shul, I don't have to let you in the shul, but if you want to come to my shul, you have to give a get. If it's something which I don't owe to him, it's not his, I'm allowed to stop him. So that's another way of putting pressure to give a get. But you can't beat him up and you can't uh, take away his money. I don't want to get into the whole complex halakha, what you're allowed to do, what you're not allowed to do. So over the years, the rabbis had to keep coming up with solutions for this big problem. I'm sure by now you've all heard about the solution that Rabbi Abadi Yosef and many other great halachic authorities signed off on, which would be that when a man and a woman get married, the man promises his wife that if there will be a separation, he forgives her for her obligations to him, but he still obligates himself to give her financial support. So initially when they came up with this contract, they said it was like $150 a day. This prenuptial agreement that I'm talking about now. $150 a day, for every day that passes, it doesn't give it a get, once they are separated. But then they have to find two net two, because $150 a day for a rich guy, it's $55,000 a year, it's not, not going to do much. So then they said, based on their status, based on their income, the Beijing will evaluate if this, is a, uh, this marriage is not going to come back together. So then the rabbis came up with an idea, well, it could even be up to $1,000 a day, that they ch that already hurts. And this is the idea of the prenuptial agreement that everybody's talking about, that the husband uh, will sign to his wife on the same day that he signs the ketubah, he'll sign that if they separate, that he's still obligating himself, even, and he forgives her for all her obligations, and then the bedin will decide exactly, they decide which bedin should uh, make the agreement between the two of them, and the Bedin will decide how much exactly he has to pay her. And this is a tremendous incentive for the person to give the get, because if he doesn't, then he can lose everything he owns, and so on and so forth. Now, there are other people trying to come up with other solutions, whatever it is. The bottom line that I am trying to make here is that from the beginning of marriage, the Torah and the rabbis always had to find two things, always had to balance this. Once they realized people were taking advantage too much this way, it was too easy to get divorced, so they had to make it a little bit more difficult. Once they realized it was too, too, women, women didn't want to get married, so they had to make it a little bit easier this way. This is a, a process which keeps going on in every generation. Okay, so in 2021, once again, we have to fine tune it. But everything within the guidelines of Allah. And to summarize and to end my talk here, a lot of people are upset and have complaints against the rabbis for not doing more. The rabbis are very limited after all in the power they have. This is not Turkey, it's not Halab, and it's not in certain countries where the rabbis have power from the government and could make edicts and enforce things. In America, of course the people have to get involved, of course the people have to do more. But at the same time, the Torah is not to blame either. The Torah is perfect. The Torah is beautiful. And the Torah teaches us to do the right thing. And the Torah teaches us to be kind and compassionate. And the Torah teaches us to help people in difficult situations. But if you find a situation where the Torah seems not to be fair to women or to, or to whoever, so the rabbis in, all, in the entire history of Judaism always find ways to balance it out and to find to it and to make sure that everybody will be taken care of. So, let's be proud of our Torah, let's be proud of our religion, and no one understand that Torah only wants the best for every one of us, and the Torah only wants us to help people and alleviate their pain, 
And if God forbid there's a situation where it's not working, let's fix it. Bezrat Hashem, we will fix this problem one way or another, whether it's with this prenuptial agreement that we spoke about or a different type of prenuptial agreement. And Bezrat Hashem, we will continue to be a beautiful community, a beautiful nation, a beautiful Am Yisrael that we always were proud of and always will be proud of till the coming of Mashiach. Amen. Kenyiratzon.